Welcome back. Today, I'll be walking through the different AI agent workflow pattern. So I have that on the site. The site is agentproject.ai. So you go straight into the uh, workflow patterns uh, on the landing page and you can see all the workflow patterns I've uh, documented here. So before going into the patterns itself, Let's talk about the building block or the atomic unit for an agentic system. An atomic unit, especially for an LLM enabled agent, is that that building block contains an LLM model, which can talk to a working memory. It can uh, talk to tools, both internal tools and external tools, and it can do relevant retrieval. So let me go deep dive into all three of these. When you look at working memory, working memory is really when an agent talks to each other, the, the ability for that agent to uh, go and retrieve previous conversations or details shared by that user. So it's uh, conversations, obviously, and uh, information coming from the user. Or even if you have multiple agents getting promoted into production, can you go and access some of the previous data from uh, previous conversations or uh, that? that uh, previous version of that agent. The relevant retrieval, pretty uh, straightforward for few, uh, pretty straightforward for those who understand semantic search, is built on semantic search. So it is uh, finding contextually similar information. That's what relevant retrieval is. I'm not going to details here because my goal here is to get into all those design patterns for uh, agentic workflows here. My first pattern would be prompt chaining. Prompt chaining has an LLM block. Remember, I called this whole thing before as a block. So that's uh, interchangeably used as an agent. But here I'm using the block and it's doing something. So let's talk about prompt chaining. It gets, you get an input prompt initially, it goes to the block. That uh, block sends it to some set of code to check the output. And uh, if that uh, prompt output or prompt response is good enough, it uh, carries forward, takes the response and forwards it back into that LLM block. So it takes an uh, initial prompt, gets a response, forwards back in, and does another prompt based on that uh, response from the previous prompt. So you can chain prompts together and I'll give you an example. In this case, if, if one of the prompts returned back uh, not so good answer, you can even fail it, right? So uh, chaining prompt, uh, a good example, I have actually some pseudocode in this page again on agentproject.ai. Uh, you have the design patterns. Here you have, let's say, initial prompt. Let's say, get me uh, trends for electronic trends for 2024. Uh, it gets those trends from that LLM. You could uh, check that output and check if that output has at least one, in this example, one AI reference, right? And then take that trend, uh, which is my uh, response from the prompt, and pass it on to my next, given these emerging trends, and I could start calling the next LLM call and do a detailed market analysis. So it's chaining prompts. I've given a pretty decent example because it's uh, actually good to take, uh, use prompt chaining to uh, get much more articulate details coming from LLMs because you're uh, using LLMs to drive continuous output. The next pattern is that reflection pattern. I, I compare this to, uh, what do I compare this to? Like uh, pair programming in developers, with developers. So you have an LLM block which generates a response. You pass that on to another LLM. I'm not using a block here just to show you that demarcation that there's an LLM. Um, it uh, takes the response, can use the response and verify that with external tools. That could be, you know, um, uh, an API call, for example. You, the, these are what tools are. You could use an API call, uh, search uh, API, uh, public expose data sets. All that are external tools. You can verify the data. Uh, or this LLM can verify the data and say, you know what? I don't, I think it's, uh, you know, not fully accurate. So I'm going to modify the response and send it back. So that's a reflection pattern, and it's uh, actually quite used, as I see when I look at some of these projects in production or uh, in design. 
uh, they have this concept of a reflection pattern. There's an advanced pattern. I'm talking about, I'm talking about architectural trade-offs, but I'm not going into those details now. There's a der derived pattern called reflection with an X. So you get an X uh, in it, and there's an interesting article around verbal reinforcement learning and how that approach uh, uh, goes ahead and improves the responses of these LLMs. So there's a derived pattern which you can take a look at on the page. Um, and then the next one, I think pattern number three uh, in my list of design patterns is the router pattern. Here you have an input uh, initially not going straight to an LLM. If it's straightforward, you could just use an ML classification router, a router pattern, right? So it says route this. I know exactly what kind of response is coming out, what kind of prompting is coming on the text based on the text used in the prompt and route it to specific agents or blocks, right? So here, I'm, like I said, I'm interchanging the block, LLM blocks as agents. In this example, I have a, you know, if it's a customer, customer service type of um, application, you uh, pass it based on the type of request coming in. You have a card lost agent, you have a points agent, and a support, a technical support agent. But however, let's say the classification is not really strong in terms of the ML classification. Uh, and and you can forward that information to an LLM classification router, which is much more easier to prompt for saying, you know, this is the request which came in, how do, which to which type of agent should I class or send it to, forward it to. So that's the router pattern. I'm not going into details again. There's some, uh, some you know, text here. And then uh, let me go into uh, the next pattern, which is called the composable pattern. A composable pattern is meant to be a little more modular in the sense that uh, you have some kind of input or output. I should probably write input and output here anyways. Uh, you talk to a research agent, which is really composed of multiple internal agents. So they, they take care of having a conversation among themselves. And uh, you have an internet research agent, which is very good at searching the internet, obviously, for those topics. There's a company research agent, which might be very good at talking to internal company tools and a, a SME interview agent where this agent would actually go ahead and talk to a SME, uh, a subject matter expert within the company to collect information. So once you have all these three, um, the this research agent orchestrates or in some lingo called group chat, um, they do that orchestration between these agents, get the information out, and then possibly forwards to another composable agent, like a presentation agent, right? So that's the example here. Um, this is getting more and more popular with certain frameworks. Again, uh, the reason, if you look at the reason why we're doing this, uh, uh, you know, documenting these patterns is also to see there, once you have a pattern document, how do you test these patterns out? How do you go ahead and uh, how do you make sure you have much more stronger, uh, little more uh, easier, repeatable way of testing these patterns in production? So that's one of the reasons, but um, as I said, composable pattern. The other pattern I have here is the orchestrator worker synthesizer pattern, or a mouthful. But you have an agent which takes in a much more larger, I guess, a high level prompt. Um, uh, and then it breaks it down to uh, certain tasks, let's say goal and tasks. And then it sends it to an orchestrator, which is smart enough to uh, say, you know what, I, I these three tasks are independent tasks and I can pass it on to block one, block two, and block three, let them figure out the, uh, what the answers are, and then you have a synthesizer. These are workers, and then you have a synthesizer who collects all the information and sends the output out. So it's parallelization, really. If you think about it, it's all parallelization, and then you have a synthesizer at the, synthesizer at the end. Okay, so uh, those are my uh, design patterns for now. Uh, and if you have any other pattern you see in production or people coming up with, let me know. I'm more than happy to give you attribution on the site. You just keep contact me directly on LinkedIn. Uh, there's author information. You can go there to the author site and uh, look for my information. And then uh, we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Bye.